Welcome to Finance Conversations. This is the 73rd episode of the Merging Life and Money Show, and I am delighted to be here today. With me today, I have Eric Dudley. Uh, Eric is a regular contributor to the show, and we will be talking about Medicare. So before we get going, for those of you who do not know me, I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I help professional women bridge the gap between life and money by teaching them the relevant financial skills and knowledge they need to take control of their money, manage their finances, and understand that they can live their best life with the money they have. Thank you for joining in today. If you are watching the replay, make sure to type hashtag replay in the chat and leave me some comments and questions. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I come to you live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to share valuable information about how to achieve financial wellness and live your life with means and meaning. So today... Uh, I will be talking to, I guess, my older audience, my um, my older niche. And since I will be addressing, along with um, Eric here, the topic of Medicare. So just like student loan, do not wait to be at the door of needing it to start looking into it. So my special guest, Eric Dudley, a, as I said, a frequent contributor to this show, will talk to us about this essential service that all of us will need to investigate at some point in our life. So first, let me introduce Eric, for those of you who have not met him. Eric is an independent experience, holistic financial advisor. And his specialties are retirement planning, um, investing solutions, and life insurance. Eric is also the uh, founder and president of Dudley Financial Group. And one of his main goals and objectives is to help his client build their best tomorrow by protecting them today. So welcome, Eric, to the Merging Life and Money Show, and welcome, followers and listeners. Thank you for joining in today. So grab a pen and a notebook, as you might want to take some notes. Um, and I'm saying that you might want to take some notes. It may not affect you right now, but you would want to know what it takes to get prepared on the healthcare side when it comes to uh, insurance, and you may have some parents or friends who are nearing the age of 65 and who might need some assistance in um, finding out how to go about it. Okay, so remember that the main objective of the Merging Life and Money Show is to share values that could benefit others. Okay, and if you have any question whatsoever, make sure to put them in the chat, all right? So today's conversation, as I mentioned, will revolve around Medicare. Uh, Eric will first uh, define Medicare, okay? Uh, then he will explain what it covers uh, and what it doesn't cover. And lastly, he will actually get into the weed and look at what plan is actually right for you. So um, I will just say that Medicare is a health insurance program for people 65 of age or older. Uh, also for people who are under 65 but have certain disabilities and Lastly, for people of any age with an end-stage renal disease, uh, commonly known, known as ESRD. So Medicare was implemented nearly 60 years ago, 
and it's quite a technical subject. So Eric, over to you to do your thing. My first question to you is, what is Medicare and what does it entail? Well, hey, thanks for having me on again, MJ. Uh, and now, Medicare is, is a complicated subject. You know, the government is all about keeping things simple for everybody to understand, right? Yep. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. They like complicated. They would they want us to believe that, right? <laughs> That's right. We would like to believe that. No. <laughs> well, Medicare is as complicated as you can possibly imagine, just like the tax code and stuff. So, but, but I'm going to try and make it simple. And, uh, and we're just going to kind of learn these things for educational uh, reasons. Uh, people need to understand what Medicare is and some of the basics so that you can have a conversation with somebody about it. OK, uh, Medicare is important to know because whenever you get to a, a point where you're going to be using it at retirement age, you know, you're, you might be in a situation like a lot of people are where they're they're counting their nickels and dimes every day. You know, they're, they might have a fixed income and they, they might be you know, worried about are they going to have enough money to live through their retirement? Um, of course, health care is going to be a major cost in retirement because people get more sick as they get older. So uh, you got to make sure that you are doing what you should do to save money, but yet to still have the coverage you need so that you can be healthy. OK, so understanding Medicare is important. Uh, so there's there's different parts of Medicare. So the first part of Medicare, first two parts of Medicare, I should say, parts A and B, that is what is called original Medicare. That's the part that was in, first in, instituted in 1966. Uh, part A is the hospital insurance, so it will pay the hospital bill. And part B is the provider insurance. It's going to uh, cover the doctor's bills. Okay, so those two together are called original Medicare. Now, part A is free. It just, as long as you uh, are, meet citizenship requirements, uh, you're going to get part A for free. Now, part B actually does cost something. It's about $170 a month. And uh, it normally, uh, the Medicare is usually taken out of people's Social Security checks if they are already taking Social Security at the time. Um, Medicare uh, Part B uh, does have a changing, you know, how much they pay according to how much you make. So if a individual, per, a person filing individually um, and making $91,000 or less a year would pay $170 a month. However, if a per, f person filing individually makes more than $91,000 a year, but less than $114,000, they, it goes up to $238 a month. And as you can see on this chart, it can go pretty high. You know, if, uh, if a person who was filing individually made 500, uh, be, between $170,000 and $500,000, they would go all the way up to $544 a month. It goes up quite a bit. Now, of course, that changes if you're filing jointly, as you can see in the second column there. Um, you know, the, the numbers change. But the reason why I wanted to show this chart is just to let you know that the numbers do change if you make more money. So you have to understand that $170 a month is the starting rate. It will go up if you make more. And there's also a $233 a month um, fee um, or deductible. I'm sorry, not $233 a month, but $233 per year deductible for Part B also. So again, that's just another, another fee you have to kind of make sure that you understand. Okay, so those are the two parts of Part A and Part B, the original Medicare that I wanted to, to go over. Now, in 1997, um, the Congress wanted to address what they call the donut holes. Okay, the donut hole in, in Medicare, uh, original Medicare, uh, was causing a lot of people stress. There was a lot of things not covered by original Medicare that they wanted to make sure was coverage covered. So they instituted what is called Part C or Medicare Advantage. And it started in 1997. And what they've done is they've worked with private companies. So this is private private companies that are working with the government to, to, give, to give the people who want uh, Part C uh, HMOs and PPOs. Now, an HMO plan is a plan where you have your own set of doctors. Doctors. Uh, Can I, uh, yes. Um, Eric, um, 
Can I ask you to um, explain what HMO stands for and what PPO stands for, for those who are not insurance savvy, if you can? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you what you've just done. You just totally, I, like, HMO, oh my gosh, I'm having a total mind blank. <laughs> okay, so you you don't need to say exactly, but what, <laughs> what does it represent? I mean, when you, uh, yeah. when you have an HMO plan, what does it do? When you have a PPO plan, what does it do? Right, an HMO mm-hmm. plan is is where you have a network of doctors and that is your mm-hmm. your doctors that you are going to work with. Okay, you're saying that you're not going to work with anybody outside of the network and mm-hmm. your coverage will 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 only cover those doctors. Okay. It it will not cover outside of the network. So if you went to a doctor outside of the network, your plan doesn't cover it. You'd have to pay the full uh, medical bill. Now, if you go to a network, right, right, right. Now they're cheaper, but Mm -hmm. that's the reason why some people like them. And if a person doesn't travel around very much and a person is set with their, you know, they want their doctor, they don't want anybody else, Mm -hmm. then an HMO plan might be suitable for them. A PPO plan, on the other hand, is a plan that's similar to an HMO plan, but allows you to go outside of the network that you have and just pay a slightly higher uh, payments sometimes, sometimes a higher co-payment, sometimes a a little more and outside of the bill uh, um, that would be paid by the plan C. But, um, but it does allow you to go outside of the network and actually get coverage and, and, and pays for it. So a PPO is a little more flexible, a little bit more expensive. An HMO plan mm-hmm. is very strict and you can only go to those, those specific doctors. But anyway, a Medicare Advantage plan also pays for a lot of other things. In addition, it covers the donut hole, but I'm going to cover that in a little while. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, part D uh, happened under George W. Bush in 2006. It's the uh, prescription drug plan. At the time, people were really alarmed. Uh, people, especially uh, diabetes, was really starting to, to become an epidemic in America. And the, the medicine for diabetes was getting very expensive. And so um, because of that, they wanted to have prescription drugs covered under Medicare, which it wasn't before. So they started having a prescription drug plan. You can get uh, this is again. A, um, it's a private companies that uh, that are working with the government to provide this, and and it can be a standalone plan. You can just get Part D, or you can get it as a part of Medicare Advantage, which is Part C. Okay, mm-hmm. so either way, either or, you can't do both. Okay, so, so tell me, tell me something before you go any further. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have those commercial on TV um, talking about Part C. Mm-hmm. So, to put it in context, um, what does it mean exactly? Does it tell you that it's not in every zip code, and uh, but you got to call and make sure that you know you you could have it and you could save some money or whatever it is. So, since you know we're talking about Medicare, it would be good because some people may not know, may not understand what what it means. It is. That is a great question. And I got to tell you, in order for us to go into the intricacies of Part C, we would need hours. Okay, (laughs) it really it really is extremely complicated. But what happens is uh, every single place in the country, according to your zip code, has a different price and different benefits for everything that you're getting. Okay, Mm -hmm. now there are so many opportunities with Part C in certain places. OK, uh, like, for instance, Los Angeles might have uh, much more benefits than you might have in a place that's much smaller with a lot less providers, because it has to do with the providers in the area uh, being being willing to contract with the government to be able to provide certain things at certain prices. And uh, and so if you have a whole lot of, uh, of providers in the area, you can wind up with really great benefits offered in that area. On the other hand, if you're in a smaller town, you may not be able to get as much, but you won't know until you actually talk to somebody who understands the area and that specific zip code. Also, there's there's different companies. So you have major ones like Humana, for instance. Okay, Humana's big into the Medicare Advantage. Um, You know, they might offer something that another company may not or vice versa. 
Okay, so it's good to price shop, be able to look around to different companies, different agents, make sure that they're talking about your zip code and not another one. Mm-hmm. And uh, because, you know, of course, that's going to completely change the game if uh, if you're looking at something outside of that. So Medicare Advantage has got to be looked at individually with each area in mind to be able to right. find out what they can actually do for you. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because, <clears throat> as I said, they, they I mean, they, every day you see it 55 times on the TV. Yeah. And uh, so, and some people may not understand what it is. Yeah. And um, and some people may decide, okay, well, I don't understand what it is, so I'm not going to look into it. And they find themselves paying to the nose for a thing that, you know, uh, they could have been eligible for mm-hmm. if only they knew. So that's why, you know, I, I, I do those kind of shows to educate people so they are better prepared, you know, when the time comes. Thanks for clarif- clarifying that commercial about Part C of the Medicare plan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, we, we're going to talk about it even more in a little bit. So. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead and pull up the uh, this first slide for Medi- the Medigap, because I, I want to talk about that. Medigap is also called Medicare Supplemental Insurance. And uh, it was something that was introduced along with uh, whenever uh, original health, uh, Medicare started. Uh, again, there was a lot of people that were saying there was a, a lot of shortfalls to original Medicare. So so they wanted to make sure that Medicare um, that had some supplemental things, which me- that's what Medigap does. OK, it is, again, uh, it's pri- it's private companies and you can't have it with Part C. You can't have Medicare Advantage and a Medigap plan. You can only have either Advantage or Medigap. You can't have both. Okay. But it works along with original Medicare, part A and B. And it's going to, um, it's going to cover a bunch of things. Actually, can you show the other slide first? Which one? Um, Um, The the one that has the, all the plans, all the different plans. This one? There you go. That's it. Yeah. As you can see, there's 10 plans that you can look at. And each one of them here, it talks about what it covers. Uh, it covers good co-insurance for part A, or it covers the co-insurance or co-payment for part B. It goes down, you know, blood, uh, hospice care, uh, you know, all, all sorts of things. And so what a person would need to do if they wanted to look at is, medic, is, is a Medigap plan something that's suitable for them? Oh my God, I didn't even realize that um, the blood had a limit. Yeah. So three points. <laughs> right. That's right. You need more than that. I, I guess you're just out of luck. <laughs> but that's what it'll, it'll cover 100% of it, for instance. But even some of those aren't covered. Like, for instance, the plan K and plan L there only covers, what, 50 or 75% of the cost for the blood. OK, and so that's what it's talking about there. So the most popular of these plans uh, for most people are plans C, F and G. Uh, they're very comprehensive. Uh, uh, most people who want a Medicap plan want a very comprehensive plan. Medigap does one a couple of things for people. Medigap plans uh, cover people who don't want to be thinking, oh, what if I have major you know, hospital or doctor's costs in the future. I want to make sure I'm paying, you know, right now uh, so that I'll never have a big swing in, in, uh, in health cost. Okay. So they're going to pay a good bit for, for a supplemental plan here. Okay. And they're going to pay a good bit for other plans that's, that actually help out with this plan too, like dental and vision. I'll go into that in a minute, but, uh, but it's going to, it's going to cost you now, but they're saying, Hey, in the future, whenever I do have a health emergency, uh, it's going to be covered and I'm not going to pay hardly anything above what I'm normally paying. So you have a very stable rate of health insurance cost. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like I said, the, there are there are some plans that don't cover very much, like Part A or, or Plan B, uh, uh, Plan A and uh, Plan B here. But uh, most people don't go with those. Most people. Yeah, so I was about to say, why, why would someone pick any of those plans? Well, I, I think that they just wanted to offer it just in case people want it, but it's not very very popular. Why? C, F, and G are very popular because it is very comprehensive. Right. So. so so let's go to the next the next so slide. I have a quick question for you. So uh-huh. you mentioned part part D, right? So the part D really that the prescription. Okay. 
The, okay, now this is confusing. Okay. All right. These are plans and these are letters. Okay. And okay. I actually messed up a minute ago too. The okay. other ones are part and whatever. So whenever you say part A, B, C, and D, those are Medicare parts. Okay. These are plans of Medigap. I know it's amazing that they actually named them the same. Yeah. That gets confusing, doesn't it? <laughs> so you could have a plan C with a part D, which is D for prescription. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I said, it gets confusing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but can you imagine? I mean, talking to up to people not that not that sixty five year old and older do not comprehend, but you know, it's it's something again, and I and I'm in, insisting upon that because you got you got, you got to deal with that and understand it before you get to that door. Right. Because when you are there, I mean, A, B, C, D, I mean, all the letters of the alphabet, one is plan, one is one is a, a part, you know, and, and if you don't, you have the other, you know, you know, you, you work all your life and, you know, and then, then you have to have another degree to understand your, your health care coverage. It is. Like I said, <laughs> I, when I first, I, I, I have my, I have a health license. Okay. And I've actually sold these before, but uh -huh. I don't do it right now. Uh, I, but, but the, the thing is, it is amazing to me that they would actually name them the same thing. I mean, there's an A, B, C, and D here, and there's a part A, B, and C, D. Right. It's mm -hmm. just crazy and confusing, but oh, well, I'm, I, I guess I shouldn't question. Well, at least, at I'm least, sure. at least, <laughs> you know, at least by saying that people yes. would pay attention and say, okay, I have a plan and there are parts to those plans. Right. right? And one thing that's so, interesting mm -hmm. about it is that we, it, like, for instance, the Medigap is not going to cover any prescription drugs. So it doesn't cover part D. Okay. Right. There is no part D to this. There's only plan D, which covers these percentages of all the stuff that you see. Okay. It covers the, the health insurance for part A or, or, or co-insurance, co-insurance yeah. for part. Yeah, anyway. And that's why I have a question because, again, I can't help it but to refer to that commercial on TV. Okay. That talks about plan C. Right. Yeah. So. Not to be confused, because yeah. Plan C does not have prescription drugs. Okay, Part C. Right. <laughs> part C. Part actually, Part C does have that. But <laughs> okay, yeah, I, yeah, I thought I understood, and I, I still haven't haven't gotten it. No, so Part C, which is a medical advantage plan. That's right. Right. Yes. So also, also offer uh, prescriptions. Yes, you can get okay. prescription drugs on that. Which okay. is part part D, by the way. So part C, uh, part C can include part D, but doesn't always. Okay. So Everybody got that. Right. Okay. <laughs> Who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> so so which leads me to the next question in this part and plans. So what is the uniqueness of having part D then? Okay. Well, here, that's a good question. Okay. So suppose a person just wanted to have original Medicare. Okay. They just said, I just want an original Medicare, A and B, but they also wanted to be able to have prescription drug cover. They can do that. They can just get an individual. Okay, so so basically it's, sorry to cut you, it's plan A and B with part D. Yes, you could do that. Okay. Or if you wanted to, you could have a Medigap plan, which we means that you have part A and part B, original Medicare. Then you get Medigap to help cover extra cost for Medicare. Okay. And then you get a part D plan in addition to that to help cover the drug cost. The reason why they would do that is because if you only got uh, original Medicare, there's a, there is no cost maximum allowed uh, amount that is that is uh, with part A and B. In other words, let's just say, for instance, you've paid your deductible and you're, you're now getting, let's say, 50% being paid or 75% paid uh, uh, from Medicare, but 25% is coming out of your pocket. Okay. If that's the case, what if you have a hospital bill of $100,000? Right. So you're on the hook for $25,000. 
There is no max out of pocket for part A and B. Okay. And that's the reason why you get a Medigap plan because the Medigap plan would cover that completely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially if you get a comprehensive one, it cover it completely. On the other hand, if you get a Medicare Advantage plan, a Part C, they have a lot of coverage. They cover quite a bit of it, but they they also have a max out of pocket. Okay, and that can be worked out according to where you live, what company you get, and all of this. And sometimes it's between twenty five hundred dollars a year. And seven thousand dollars a year. It depends upon where you live again and in, in the in the plan. But I mean, we, we at least about, have an idea we, that you'll have a max out of pocket. We are talking about significant amount of money. Sure. So and, and I'll, that's why I'll it's say important this. to plan about it. Mm-hmm. A person who just gets part A and B is really susceptible to a huge hospital bill if they don't have something to go along with it. Because it can, you know, just just one cancer diagnosis, you know, I mean, all of a sudden you've got possible surgeries, chemotherapies, a lot of prescription drugs. If you don't have something that's going to help, you know, supplement the, you know, Medicare, uh, the, the part A and B, the original Medicare, then you could wind up with some real, you know, medical bills that you don't want to have. Uh, and so that's the reason why the government, in 1997, came up with Part C, which is Medicare Advantage. And of course, the government had already come up with me- the Medigap plans, um, which, which you know, supplement all of these, uh, uh, the original Medicare and help to cover these donut holes, okay? These holes where people were getting, so going hence, bank- hence they were the, going bankrupt. Yeah, hence uh, the donut, donut hole concept. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And this well, next slide. I, I can tell you, you need a degree to understand your healthcare cover. <laughs> yeah, it, it's good to know because I mean, it can it can really save people from bankruptcy. Uh, Medicare or medical bills is one of the highest reasons for people going bankrupt, especially when they're older. Uh, yeah, sure. So, so making sure you have this uh, some type of coverage that's going to keep you, you know, so that you're not liable for all this is is important. If you can go to the next slide, I do want people to understand that Medicap plans. While they can be very secure, okay, and they are very secure to an extent as far as, you know, if you have a really bad diagnosis or have an emergency surgery, they will pay almost all of your bill, okay, many times, depending upon how much, you know, coverage you get, how much, how comprehensive it is. But they're also expensive, you know. I mean, this is just an average plan of, of plan F and plan G. I just wanted to show, you know, these are monthly costs. And that's in addition to the $170 a month cost that you're also going to be paying for your Part B, um, which, you know, that's per person, too. So if there's there's a husband and a, and a, and a wife, uh, you've got $170 times two, and then you've got this times two. All of a sudden, you're paying a, quite a bit just for that. And then you, right. you still have not paid for your dental, your vision, or your hearing, or your prescription drug. Okay. okay. <laughs> so it can be pricey yep. to have that type of peace of mind. It can be pricey. Indeed. And again, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would never stop saying it, you know, uh, planning, planning, planning. Yeah. yeah. But it's all about suitability. I mean, if, if it's mm-hmm. worth it to you to pay that and you say to yourself, well, what if I have this happen or that happen, you know, disease, emergency surgeries. And you know what? Peace of, peace of mind doesn't have a price. Because you really, and, and, you really don't know, you know how you're going to be a- affected, yeah. or you know, with diseases as you as you grow older, right? You have the wear and tear of the body, yeah. And anything that you never had when you were young could start happening to you when you get older. Exactly, and, and yeah. also the Medigap plans here, uh, you don't have a PPO or an HMO. You don't have to worry about are you in network, out of yeah. network. You could right. travel anywhere. You could be in Australia and and use your plans. OK, you could be wherever and use your plan. You could be where, wherever you want to be and use your plans and they'll cover it, you know, all the way up to whatever the limits, you know, according to what what type of plan you sign up for. So, I mean, it is very comprehensive and it's all about peace of mind. And can you afford it? Yep. That's uh, well, you know, um, it's important to mention it because um, then, you know, um what kind of uh, 
plan you 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 have to to make because if you plan to to travel the world, you know, when you retire, uh, you got to make sure that you have the proper um, health cover um, suitable for that because nice. you know you, you can't just have the enough for the ticket and the accommodation and you know and having a good time wherever you're going to be uh, because things happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know and you don't want to um to um deplete all your savings either, you know, if you were to if you were to get sick. Right, right, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Hey, well, let's. Um... Okay, let's let's carry on. So, um, which um, I guess the, the, my next question was going to be, what does it cover or not cover? But you have touched on all of those. So, Somewhat. Uh-huh. It doesn't cover long-term care. Okay. okay? It won't cover uh, services that help you perform basic tasks, whether through a caregiver or a stay in a nursing home are generally not covered by by these products. Uh, the, it doesn't cover hearing aids. It dev- doesn't cover dental care. It doesn't cover eyeglasses. Um, now, it will cover uh, cataract surgery in a lot of cases. Um and it doesn't cover also uh, medical services that are like cosmetic surgeries or corn removals. Um, and it doesn't help you with travel between appointments. And these are some things that actually are covered uh, in some cases. Uh, the, the hearing, the dental, the vision, the Part D are, are, are in many cases covered by, by Medicare Advantage. Okay? okay. Medicare Advantage is extremely affordable in most cases. Um, and will actually help you with all of those, the hearing, the dental, the vision, and the Part D, and give you coverage and and the max out-of-pocket, which is so important to cover uh, that Medicare, the original Medicare doesn't have. Um, and so Part C is a very affordable uh, alternative, although, you know, it's not as comprehensive as Medigap, but it's not right. as expensive either. Right. Um, and then also uh, Part C Medicare Advantage also sometimes will even reimburse all or part of your Part B payments every month. So like I was saying before, you, it starts off at $170 a month. Um, there, are, there are some um, a Medicare Advantage plans that will actually give you some of that money back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's, um, again, back to my little commercial uh, that I hear several times a day, and they were talking about getting some money added to their social security. Is that what you refer they refer to? Yeah, that's right. Joe Namath was it? Joe Namath that was on the commercial. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know they're, they're getting all the football, the quarterbacks. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and uh, and that's exactly right. That's what he's talking about with the give back program. Right. Okay. So um, again. Um, Thank you so much. So, so just to to, to look at this uh, covered and not covered, um, you know, it's it's a you got to make the difference between a um, HMO and PPO when it comes to the in network versus you know anywhere uh, outside the network, and regardless of what it is, Medicare, so that I understand it clearly, um, does not cover everything. So um, long, long-term long care is one of it. Hearing aids as well, uh, as well as dental care, uh, eye, eye, eye care, I guess, eye glasses and stuff like that. Certain, you said, um, cataract surgeries are covered. Uh, however, the purchase of your uh, appliances um, are not, right? And um, so that those are things that... Um, people need to know because, um, well, I, I can't take my case for, um, I, I wore glasses most of my life. So, <laughs> but for those, you know, who, uh, particularly now in the te- technological age, everybody's in, in front of a screen, which means that your eyesight would eventually take a, you know, will suffer from that. So 
it's important and um, hearing it. And I mean, you tend to lose your your hearing as you go older, I guess, wear and tear, right? And don't talk about the, the teeth. <laughs> Okay, so and you, that's important. You need you need you need them to eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, so that's important to know. That's not all these ancillary services are not covered under Medicare. Okay, and as you mentioned, uh, if you need some uh, long long term care, that's not covered, and that's important as you grow older. So I will urge my audience. Um, particularly the younger one with aging parents, uh, to make sure to have that conversation with your parents before they turn 65, okay? So they could make the necessary uh, necessary financial arrangement and, you know, look at their savings because that will be needed to cover that extra premium if you want to have access to certain things, Okay. Yep. So, which um, leads me to my last question to you. Uh, so, how does one know what plan best suits them? Well, I think it really comes down to what type of person you are as far as uh, do you need a lot of peace of mind? Are you a person who, you know, just just has faith that everything's going to work itself mm-hmm. out and you're not worried too much? Or are you a worry worrier? You know, are you are you concerned about things all the time? Does it keep you up at night worrying? Uh, so uh, obviously that would make a difference in what is suitable for you. Also, mm-hmm. it makes a difference as to how much you're willing to pay for that. Uh, and it also has to do with the, how healthy you are. I mean, whenever you turn 65, if you're in fabulous shape and you're running a whole bunch and don't have a history of uh, a lot of uh, bad health things in your family, then that'll make a difference as to which one is the best one for you, too. But the main thing to to think about is, and this is something we've covered many times, and you know, me and MJ have talked about, uh, is planning, planning, planning ahead. You know, you don't want to to get in the middle of a, a bad situation and have not thought about it. You know, whenever you get to sixty five, you want to have already had plenty of conversations with experts about, you know, which is the best plan for you? What is the best plan in your area where you live? You know, is it suitable for you? Because do you travel a lot? Are you possibly going to need to see different doctors in different areas of the country for whatever? You know, do you have the money for it? Do you have a health savings account, which is a good thing to be thinking about too, uh, so that you'll have money just in case? Um, And also, do you have long-term care insurance? Because we did not talk about that whenever I said, you know, uh, Part C covers the the dental vision, uh, the uh, hearing, and also the the, the, the prescription drug, but mm-hmm. it doesn't co- cover the long term care. So making sure that you get that in order is yeah. something to think about. Yeah, too, and, so. and that that is the one thing that we addressed. I, I can't remember which show it was, mm-hmm. but um, we did have a a show on long term care as well, mm-hmm. um, probably that last year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was one one of the very uh, probably first show that uh, we have together. We had together. We did together. So, yes, so um, let me show my face talking and behind you here. Um, yeah, so that's um, so that is very, very, very important. So it will depend on how much cover you desire, how much peace of mind you, uh, you want. Mm-hmm. And, of course, um, I, we do say that peace of mind doesn't have a price, but you got to put the money aside in order to pay, to pay for that peace of mind. Yep. And that's not an overnight situation. That is an overtime situation, yeah. as Absolutely. always. Okay, so um, what else do you have to tell us? Uh, what, uh, based on your experience, I would one question that I would have for you would be: um, What are um, the most common problems uh, with Medicare that you? you've known about? Well, I think when people um, haven't considered the max out of pocket question, you know, I mean, you've really got to make sure that you cover yourself so you don't have a bankruptcy problem uh, mm-hmm. that is caused by a medical issue. Uh, you you want to be, honestly, you want to be on something that's more than just Medicare Advantage or, Me, or Medicare A and B, the original. You want to have something else with it, the, either it's Advantage or the Medigap, because by by covering that max out of pocket, you can definitely save yourself from, from losing everything you have, really. 
Right. And I believe also that um, people seeking uh, Medicare, uh, there, there is a, a deadline, there is a, a, an age period that they have to start looking at it or register for it. Do, do you Can you enlighten us a little bit about that? Well, when you first turn 65, you're allowed to get onto the Medigap insurance without, uh, without any health screening. But if you wait too long, then you're going to be subject to health screening. So then they'll, of course, reject you if you so have quick, 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 quick existing condition and stuff like that. Would right. Matter. Right. right. And so, so that's the reason why making sure that, you know, you start looking into this before you even turn 65 so that you can make sure that you hit all the windows just right and you're, you're going to mm-hmm. be covered. Um, uh, and also, um, whenever you are about to, you can actually get onto um, your Medicare coverage, you know, within a few months of turning 65. So you don't have to do right. that. That's what I was about to say, because for some reason, still looking at those, um, Medicare commercial and stuff. And we're saying you've got so many months to do something and, and to Medicare. The good mm-hmm. news is that when you turn 64, you're going to be very popular on the phone. People are going to be calling you a hundred times every week. Okay. And, uh, and lots and lots of people will want to talk to you about Medicare stuff. So, so, so basically you do have to register and select your plan and your parts before you actually turn 65. Well, you don't have to. I mean, like, for instance, let's just say, let's just say you're working still, uh-huh. okay, and you're getting... Your no, you're assuming that you are off the clock. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. So if you've already retired, and really the best thing, unless you just want to pay for private insurance, which is crazy, um, right. you know, it would be much better to go ahead and take your Medicare then. And yes, you should you should start looking into it whenever you're 64 and a half and, and make your decision by the time as early as you can to, to get on whatever plan you want. Cause if you make the right plan, you'll have peace of mind, but you're also liable to save a lot of money too. Right. So can people actually have a kind of a hybrid situation, part Medicare, part, part private? Um, well, that's, what, that's what you would be doing if you decided that you wanted to have a Medigap plan. That right. is a Medigap plan. It would be a private plan. Well, a private plan. And, right. uh, and of course, you would get a private insurance with uh, your prescription drug and your hearing. Mm-hmm. Your vision, right. vision. So, yeah, you can. Um, and, uh, and of course, then be having it the, the bulk of your medical coverage being from original Medicare, that right. would be a good thing, too. Good. And, and, and again, I'm asking those questions because of the planning. You don't want to be sick and try to figure out, okay, what does my coverage, what is my coverage? What am I entitled to? How much money am I likely to to put out? And, you know, and you, you're talking about astro- astronomical um, hospital bill, potentially. A day in hospital is, is quite expensive these days, right? And, uh, I mean, I was just looking at your chart. I mean, Three pints of blood. <laughs> That's all they cover. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't know what could potentially happen if you need a surgery or anything like that. I don't think that three pints will go far. <laughs> so, so I guess um, when it comes to lab work and stuff like that, three, pa- three pints might just do it. But, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's we're laughing about it, but it's a serious matter. So again, um, you know, uh, thank you so much, Eric, for this very, 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 um, how to say, comprehensive and informative uh, presentation today. And um, so let me just recap uh, what you touched on today. So you you talked about um, what is Medicare, and then you look at the various um, coverage that it offers, uh, the various plan. And um, and lastly, um, you gave us some clarity about what plan is right for you. So um, listeners and followers, that is a very, very important topic. And I'm sure uh, I'll be talking to Eric and we'll probably dice it and slice it and probably come back with a more 30 minutes uh, little session there. 
Oh, because, can I can I can I say one other thing? I just want to because I, I I hate the fact I had a total mind blank about HMO and PPO. Okay, <laughs> HMO is a health main, maintenance organization, and a PPO is a preferred provider kind organization. Of, so, okay. Okay. okay, no problem. So I was just just saying that it is such an important topic, and it's so many. I mean, right now, the boomers are the second largest um, segment of the population in America. Um, they're slightly overtaken, they have been overtaken slightly by the millennial. So, uh, which means there are millions and millions and millions of people that are either retired over the age of 65 or who are looking at retiring. So we will, uh, I'm sure, uh, not in the distant future, take another look at Medicare and probably do something more specific to a particular plan or part uh, or even a a summary uh, highlight um, so that people could really understand uh, what they are likely to face. And again, um, a lot of major things are not um, covered. Uh, long-term care, I'm going to say that again, long-term care, hearing, uh, aid, uh, um, AIDS, um, also glasses, um, uh, prescription glasses, and dental care. So it is very important to secure those things from other providers uh, so that... Um, as, as Eric said, you don't um, declare bankruptcy on yourself because of health reasons. Okay, so I will end by saying that Medicare is very important in the United States uh, because, as we saw today, it provides health care insurance for American um, age 65 and over, or anyone who qualify for it in America. And it is also the largest health insurance program in the country, um, covering um, the last statistic that I saw, they were talking about, about almost like 55 millions of people. And uh, and I would even say that those millions of people, um, they otherwise without Medicare, they would have not been able to afford health care. And as you noted, Eric, It covers a wide range of medical services, and it is also accepted by most doctors and hospitals. Okay, it is, um, Medicare also helps to keep healthcare costs, I would say down, by providing a way for people to get the care they need without having to pay for it um, out of their own pocket, which is very important. And lastly, since um, Medicare was implemented in 1966, I think it was passed in 1965 and implemented in 1966, um, Medicare has been a very important part of um, the social safety net in the United States, as it is a larger source of, again, I would say healthcare funding for low-income Americans. So thank you, Eric, for your awesome contribution to the show today. Um, As I said, we will meet again very soon, (laughs) Uh, regardless of um, the topic that we're going to address. But I really, we we should have a a private talk about that and see how we could um, probably do a Medicare series period where we will unearth basic stuff that people should know and should be looking um, um, at knowing if they don't know. And um, particularly those who are heading that way to know that it is important to have healthcare saving. Okay. So uh, thanks again, Eric. And uh, um, let me put your information on, uh, down in the banner for the rest of the show, which is going to be ending very shortly. So if anybody has any question about Medicare, uh, any related question to Medicare, they could uh, reach out to you so you could um, answer their question. 
So for more information about how to achieve financial wellness from the inside out and live a purposeful life with the money you have, join me next week, Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and 9 p.m. Atlantic Time for my Bermuda Pips. And also Friday, 10 a.m. Brisbane, Australia time for my Australian friends. Thank you for being here today on the Merging Life and Money Show. I am your host, marie jo César. I will be back again next week. Until then, continue merging life and money. Bye for now. 